Hey guys, it's Derek here from Pacific Coast Auto. We're looking at a, uh, an S14 Silvia. This one here is a little bit odd because it's uh, not only a non-turbo, but it's also an automatic transmission one. And then this one was bought from auction. It's gonna be sent over to Estonia, which oddly is a country where we're getting a lot of people contacting us from. So I guess YouTube in Estonia is sending people our way. Anyways, um, there are a few modifications. There's a stretch tower bar on here, an aftermarket air filter with an ARC intake plenum type thing. I guess the, the purpose of this is to give you a better response when you're coming on and off the throttle because it'll already have air sitting in here. That's less to pull through right at the beginning of, um, of that. Once you're on uh, high throttle or high speeds, you're, you're not going to notice any difference from something like that other than I guess maybe some difference in the, the heat dissipation of aluminum compared to rubber. I don't even know if that would make a difference. Anyways, the coolant was low, about 900 milliliters. So you don't want to watch that. It's getting up to operating temperature right now. Uh, this stain here came from a super leaking fuel. That's not actually water coming out of there. And so I did top it up with water, but uh, you're gonna want to check the coolant mix when you get it. Oil was okay. And then the non-turbos you're gonna find are a little bit more reliable, I suppose, uh, than the turbo version, simply because there's less heat and less moving parts. And so no turbo oil seals to blow. And so in that respect, it'd be better. Better fuel economy too for the most part. So not much to talk about in the engine room. The S14s are a car we're not selling too many of, but I guess uh, they're getting popular for the US at the moment. This one has 195,000 kilometers, and I would grade the body not bad, but the paint is pretty bad in all areas. Uh, and I'll show you that in more details as we go. So I'll start by uh, translating the auction inspection sheet for you here. It's a 1995 Silvia 2 liter engine. It's the same size as the turbo, but uh, puts out quite a bit less than the turbo in terms of power. Uh, turbo for the S14, I believe, is somewhere around 250. I think this one would be somewhere around 200 or so, maybe even a little bit lower than that. I don't know exactly. It's an auction grade R because it's been in an accident, interior B. Uh, it comes with a Navi, uh, HDD Navi. It's a one owner car, toll collection box for Japanese highways, aftermarket exhaust and then the report here for the condition. And keep in mind, this is the information that you get when you're going to be bidding on the cars. And so um, it shows you kind of an idea of the damage. Sometimes with some cars, you gotta read between the lines a little bit, but uh, here, let's, let's start by going through this and then to this. So front bumper has heavy scratches and scuffs, peeling paint on this fender, peeling paint on the roof. This side's actually not that bad, even though it shows a lot of different marks, and A1 is not bad, AU1 is not bad. A2, it's on the side skirt, and then U1s, they're all not bad as well. Side skirt over here has a small crack in it, and the back section has large scratches and peeling paint on the back, which just happens to be on the spoiler. As far as this goes, it says front accident has been repaired, rear bumper bracket part is bent. Uh, da -da -da -da. What is this? Oh my gosh, why can I not e read this? Oh, I see. Okay, that's the fuel. <laughs> fuel cap is a different color than, than usual. So yeah, it is a, like the door to the fuel cap. Okay, exterior has paint fade on it. Um, and that's on various areas, like for example up here. Pardon me for not getting this part of it done in a, in a quicker fashion, but there's a lot of things to go over. So carpet has a rip, interior is dirty, core support has a bend in it. Now what this is, is it, it got hit and then it was bent back, but you can still kind of see some of the bend. Left front inner panel, same thing. Right front inner panel, same thing. Underside has surface rust and has been painted and very scratches, dents and repairs on it. So let's do a once around of the car here. I think the S14, this one being an early model with the different headlights, I think it's a good looking car and I've always liked these cars. I like the S13s, 14s and 15s. I know a lot of people would think that the 15s are the best, especially people from America or Canada, because that was the one that we didn't get. And the S14s, we got them in Canada, but there weren't, weren't a lot of them. Even, you know, 15 years ago when I wanted to potentially buy one of these as my own cars, uh, they were really hard to come by. And they didn't even come as turbo engines. They came as a 2.4 liter inline four cylinder truck engine. Here in Japan, they all come in two liters. There aren't any 2.4s here. Okay, so looking at body here, we got some difference in the side markers. You can see some alignment problem there. 
Also, these front signals have been changed. And then we got quite a bit of damage right there on the front bumper. In fact, the whole bumper should probably be repainted because on the other side, same thing. Some problems with peeling paint here. And with alignment of the hood, you can see here. Now that would be from the accident. It's causing some slight misalignments there. Looking here, you can see some paint fade. It's really not so bad. And then this section here in the back is what they said the U1 was. I consider this a little bit bigger than U1 just because there are enough dots that, that um, it's more visible. It's still not terrible. It's not a giant dent. Got a car behind me, so I just had to get out of the way. Apparently these spoilers are sought after in the USA. I don't really know. Somebody told me that. I don't know if he's full of it or not. But uh, the peeling paint is on the spoiler there. And then you can see some slight color differences between the way that the paint settle is on, like a rubber or a plastic piece, and then the, the metal of the trunk. It is the same paint, it just settles differently. You'll sometimes find that on bumpers of cars that have faded paint. I've always thought the tail lights look good on these, the one stripe tail light, kind of reminiscent of a Porsche, even though the car's really nothing like a Porsche. And then I'm not sure if we, if this was the case in the auction, auction inspector would have said so, but I think that um, it got a flat because there's a flat tire inside there that matches the same four tires that are on the car. And so if you're the owner of this car, please let me know what you want me to do. I can get another tire put onto there at a shop if you want, or we can ship it like this and you can handle it once you get there. The problem with getting a, a single tire put on is you're going to have different wear side to side on the tires because these tires are rather old. You're looking at like, uh, I think it's like a 2005 tire or something but they still have good tread on them let me see if I can get that date I got it earlier yeah 2005 with probably about 70 percent tread on the on the tires and so a tire that old with that much tread means that the car probably hasn't been driving very much recently sunroof on there cool speaker pods in the back and a Nismo, the Sun Motorsports International sticker that looks like it's seen better days. I prefer the look of this spoiler over the S15's spoiler, and I wish I had a, one to show you, but both of those have had the spoilers removed off of them. Also, bumper problems here. And I don't know if you can see it, but there's these fine paint cracks here, here, which is what happens when the paint doesn't flex as much as the bumper does when you hit it. I'll give you a quick look at back seats. And the interior smells a little bit like, a little bit like dust, but it's a much better smell than some of the older cars. Okay, I'm gonna go over to the other side before I say much more about the interior. It's nothing. Okay. I'm not sure what's gonna happen to this car. I believe that, uh, I believe that the person said that it's possible that this might turn into a drift car. I'm not too sure, but it absolutely would be something that you want to do with a automatic non-turbo because you're basically at that point buying the chassis with a whole bunch of parts that you would need to get it to go fast. And then you can work on it in your time that you have. I hate steering covers like this. And here's a good example of why. Take a look in here. It's all come separated and this part that's supposed to be soft is all hard. And then you can't really grip the steering wheel without it feeling very awkward. So I think most people would agree with me. Something like that is not something that you want to have on your car. And then uh, red tape. This is not stock. It was just put on because this person likes red tape. And so it looks kind of stupid, in my opinion. White, page, white face gauges are very cool. And dashboard has no cracks. It's a nice thing. There's the automatic transmission shifter. Let's see if we can see the, the pedals down there. The two pedals instead of the three pedals. And you'll pay probably about a third the cost. Well, compared to a turbo, um, like a same condition, turbocharged five-speed manual, the, uh, an automatic non-turbo is going to be about 25% of the cost actually at auction and so you wouldn't be able to get into it for cheaper and a lot of the turbo ones have have been driven really hard an automatic one typically won't have the same amount of 
stress to the chassis I su suspect you would see in most of the turbo ones. Okay, so that's basically the end of the video here. If you have any questions, feel free to post those in the comments section. Um, or you can check out our website. <laughs> We're awfully busy right now, so if you send us an email to our website, then uh, it may take a little bit of time, but we will get back to everybody. So thank you everyone for watching here, and have a nice day.